Elrond, it's Mark from Digital Home Systems. Uh, the format for this webinar is going to be slightly different. Uh, the main reason for it is we realized we should actually show you more of an actual visual representation of what's happening instead of just looking at my face with a light occasionally turning on and off. Uh, as you can see on the right hand side, we currently have a little bit of a bat box set up. Uh, it's connected up to a lamp, which is on the left hand side, turned away for you to avoid glare. And then we have two other switches in the back, one of them, which is a dimmer. So for this presentation, it's mainly focusing around the Quibino modules. Now, as some of you have already used Quibino modules in the past, there are actually a couple of little things you can do with them, which you wouldn't have actually thought is entirely, what is entirely useful, but at the same point in time, it is a nice little thing to actually know. Um, as you know, on pretty much most of your devices, every single Quibino module either has one or two inputs on them. Uh, generally, single switches, as an example, have I, one, two, and three. As you can see from the slide, there are actually spare inputs on quite a few of the Quibino devices. So those spare inputs are actually usable inside of a lot of automation systems uh, for various things. So as an example, the flush one relay has I1, I2, I3, but only has one physical output for it, uh, which is essentially assigned to the I1, which means you actually have two spare inputs you can actually use in a flush one relay. Much goes in the same with the dimmer because your I1 controls your actual light load, essentially dims it up and down, and you still have an I1 and an I3. Now, there are some devices which essentially have less relays that you can actually use for them. Uh, as a perfect example, the 1D relay only has one spare input for it. Uh, the reason for it is one of its actual inputs is replaced by an input relay, uh, essentially an input for its actual dry contact. There are, of course, some devices that actually do not have inputs, and all of them are already in use, such as the Flush 2 relay. Uh, its I1 controls the Q1, its I2 controls the Q2, and the exact same thing for the uh, Flush shutter. Apart from instead of controlling a light, you specifically control a motor, so a rail shutter. Uh, this essentially goes the same with uh, the Flush shutter DC as well. However, what I will actually do is I'll show you a useful thing you can actually do with the additional inputs on a single relay. So as you can currently see on the user interface, we have three devices kicked up. We have our Kubino dimmer, which is the one on the left-hand side. We have a uh, essentially a standard relay on the right-hand side, which is also a Kubino. I can turn those on and off accordingly from the user interface. And then we have our single relay, which is essentially connected up to that lamp. So if you've actually seen some of our previous webinars, uh, one of which is specifically regarding direct association, you would know that you can control devices specifically through the device themselves, not needing to actually run from the controller. This is actually the exact same for these. However, the I2s and I3s on Cubinos actually have dedicated associations for them. As a perfect example, if I choose endpoint zero, you will have additional keys you can use. So key two and key three. If I, example, want to actually control that dimmer using an I2 input, doesn't actually have a relay for it on the output. However, I can make it actually specifically control this device. So adding an association much like normal, it's added in the system. And now if I flip my second switch, light turns on, plug it off, light turns off. Pretty easy. However, there is actually something which is a bit more usable if you don't use direct associations. Uh, to actually do that, each input actually has what is referred to uh, in the manual as a set function for it. By default, all Cubinos come default with them set to zero, which means they're inactive and not actually readable in the system. So I'll simply remove this direct association so it does not cause issues for us in the future. And then while that's removing, go to the parameters. So the I2 and I3 inputs for a Quibino single switch, you'll be able to find it for the corresponding devices in their manuals, is 100 and parameter 101. 100 is our I1, sorry, our I2, 101 is our I3. Now, in add the manuals, there's a couple of options that are available for it. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, which is essentially is a couple of them there, such as motion sensors, flood sensors, carbon monoxide. However, what we want to actually specifically get into Fabara and make it function correctly is actually number nine. Number nine is what is referred to as a generic sensor. So once we've done that and set those to nine, we just press save and wait for it to actually give us our refresh. 
So as you can see, value nine on both of those. However, as you may have noticed, we actually don't have any new devices on this interface. Even if it was actually to refresh it, nothing would appear for that. The reason for that is the Fabaro hasn't actually been able to read those endpoints as of yet. So in order for the Fabaro to be able to read them, we actually need to remove the device from the controller and add it back in again. Now, the Quibino devices actually have two types of exclusion from controllers. You have your hard resets, which are your five button presses, and you have your soft resets, which are three button presses. So as an example, if I was to exclude this device, So I've essentially just included that unit back into the system. As you can currently see, there are four devices now instead of what you'd expect for three. The reason for this is it loads in much like a Fabaro uh, dimmer or a double switch. It essentially has a master de device, a parent, which is essentially the first binary switch you see there. It has our actual relay itself, which I turn it on and off, control like normal. And then we have our input two and input three actually loaded in there as well. Now, at the current point in time, our input twos and input threes won't actually do anything. The reason for that is because the Quibinos are not actually a templated device as of yet, what we need to do is actually change the association commands. Uh, at the current point in time, it's only set to actually receive the associations from the input one. And as such, we need to actually change that. So to do that, quite easy. Go to the master device, go to associations, and simply remove your first endpoint. This will of course make it so the actual physical switch won't actually uh, operate the, will continue to operate the device, but won't update the controller. We simply need to go to endpoint zero, choose our life learning group, and instead of doing single channel, multi-channel. So we press add. And as you can see, it's now actually adding the system. So if I were to hold down the push button on this device, it will take a little bit of time. Oh, I'm looking at parent. But as you can currently see, could be no relay is active. If I was to turn it off, it will turn off after a couple of seconds. Now, this is the exact same for the input two and input threes, as they are not exactly designed to be, uh, best way to describe it, load into a controller completely. If I switch these, they will take roughly three to four seconds to actually change over to be in triggered states. The reason for that is to remove the possibility of false positives. So as you can see, they both became running men by switching back off. Roughly three or four seconds again, and it'll go back to being in the breach state. Now, what you can actually do with these, as they are normally open contacts, you can actually have it set up so they can essentially turn on devices as you expect. There is a bit of a delay for it, but it is a useful thing to be able to just turn off all devices at any one time. Uh, as a perfect example, I was to go into scenes, add a new scene, let's create a simple block scene, a all lights command, drag in our new device, control section, input two, motion is detected. What we then want to do is just add in a cut lights. So now that, that is done, we can simply go back to our devices to actually show it, simply flick them on, wait a couple of seconds, and then the scene will trigger. You can see all the lights have actually currently turned on, but we don't actually have an off scene as of yet. We can simply put that back in, but of course we can essentially use it to switch up as well. So this could be useful in certain situations where you just want a quick little way of actually turning all the lights off in the household, particularly useful for a front door. You're just about to leave, your client can just flick a switch and it will automatically turn off all the lights in the household without actually needing to you know, go to their phone inside their car to actually switch the devices individually. I hope you enjoyed this webinar. If you do have any questions, uh, feel free to either email myself or office. Uh, if you do have a couple of questions about interfacing this into your current existing systems, by all means, feel free to give us contact by either through our emails or through phone itself. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a nice day.